What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here uh, on this Friday, end of the work week, uh, December 17th, 2021 to date, about 11.30 a.m. So technically, good morning here from the West Coast, California. Latest quake on the globe, a 2.7 out in the Pacific around the big island of Hawaii. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity on the Earthquake 3D globe, Shows quite a bit of movement up through the Aleutian Islands area. All through this region, stretching down through even parts of the North American plate here into the center part of the country. Let's go ahead and check out details on what's going on here with the earthquake activity map here from the last 24 hours of earthquakes. This is the all magnitudes, of course, states and territories uh, include microquakes, the rest of the globe. Uh, 4.0 and above from the USGS. There's that earthquake on the Big Island around the southeast flank. Not not a whole lot more activity kicking up around the Loihi Seamount. This activity here is from yesterday. Had a pretty good swarm of movement here around that submarine volcano, uh, kicking up some uh, earthquake activity. This is the last seven days of all magnitudes. You can see that movement over the last week or so. A ways away from this swarming up here around the Big Island, uh, it is calming down a little bit. We will continue to keep an eye on that area, but for now, the southeast flank region seeing quite a bit of uh, earthquake movement down there at about 34 kilometers or so uh, below the surface. Quite a bit of uh, activity ramping up on the southeast flank today along the Aleutian Trench up here. Looks like uh, right outside of the... Uh, Oh, where is that? That's uh, Davidad Volcano, I believe. We're just to the south of it. We did see that volcano get elevated on their status uh, within the past week. Uh, so a little bit of movement volcanic activity kicking up around the uh, volcano there in the Aleutian chain. This activity today, though, uh, to the south, about 4 kilometers uh, or 4.4 magnitude and 10 kilometers for this earthquake that struck within the last 24 hours seen some activity also further to the east some shallow movement a little microquake activity stretching up towards alaska uh, this map right here shows the all magnitude so you guys can see the uh, activity ramping up all the way up to about fairbanks level in and around the anchorage area as well this is all very typical for a subduction zone region when it comes to the pacific and the north american plate also, uh, some activity returning to Northern California around the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Some microquake activity in a subduction zone quake with a 1.7 uh, earthquake, a little small microquake kicking up into the Cascadia mega thrust area, 17.3 kilometers, indicating the depth of that earthquake uh, down dip of the subduction zone, the locked area. Further up north, Pretty quiet throughout Oregon, Mount Hood region, pretty quiet as well. We did see some further deep activity up here uh, outside of the Strait of Juan de Fuca and up around the Vancouver Island area, 3.6, 17 kilometers for that earthquake as well. A little bit of movement southeast of Seattle. Things kind of just mellow throughout this area currently, but in the Intermountain West region, seeing things ramp up and all through Southern California as well. Looking at this activity first in the Montana region shows some activity kicking up around Three Forks, Montana with a 3.1. This one's pretty shallow here. See a little swarm of movement here within the last 24 hours. Some microquakes kicking up. If you look at the last seven days of activity in the Montana region, we've seen uh, these little spots of swarms all over the place uh, through Montana. There's another little swarm down here. Uh, this activity in Idaho is aftershock sequences there from the six-pointer that struck uh, a year or so ago within that region. Yellowstone itself, we'll go ahead and jump into that real quick while we're at it. Uh, no, I didn't cover that last night because there wasn't a whole lot going on. Today, a little bit different story, at least earlier, a few hours ago, seen some quakes kick up in the northwest corner of the park, some activity showing up. Some microquakes in the very small pointy areas. These little sharp signatures there indicating very localized small earthquakes with a couple larger ones there uh, throughout the early morning hours. You can see this activity somewhat showing up on the USGS map. 
uh, outside of West, or yeah, just outside of West Yellowstone. But uh, the other activity in this map, uh, not shown up yet from the USGS. Sometimes they get to it, sometimes they don't. Uh, but there is some activity kicking up. At least earlier this morning in Yellowstone, since then, things have calmed down, mellowed out. But as always, we will keep an eye on Yellowstone um, throughout the day today. Further down south, let's go ahead and check out Southern California. Areas to the north here, like I mentioned, it's not a whole lot going on here along the Antelope Valley area. Long Valley Super Volcano seeing some movement uh, just south of the Caldera region. Some microquake activity near Tom's Place. And further down south along the Ridgecrest area, things beginning to ramp up. And also down here in the southern part of the state where we've seen a 2.1 near Thermal, California. 3.7 kilometers for that. Looks like maybe they're trying to activate the southern part of the San Andreas Fault there with a uh, sonic boom. Well, maybe that wouldn't activate it, right? But a 2.0 measured earthquake from a sonic boom down there at the Salton Sea. That's kind of kind of odd. You don't, just don't see that too often. Uh, of course, there's military all over the place, right? Some activity up on the North American plate here around the Cottonwood Mountains. That's about... Uh, little ways away from the uh, San Andreas Fault, looks like about 5 to 10 miles to the northeast. But still some activity in that region indicating the stresses down here on the southern part of the state. The Brawley Seismic Zone south of the sonic boom. I've seen some uh, little bit of quake activity as well over the last 24. And then stretching down into Baja, California. We did see a little bit further movement in the Gulf of California region with a 4.4 way down south. No further activity around the swarming area that we've seen last week, but uh, still keep an eye on this area as we're seeing a return of pressure along the southern part of this region. Oklahoma, outside of OKC, getting some activity with a 2.0 earthquake within the last hour. 4.5 kilometers for that earthquake north of Shawnee. Over here around, uh, looks like uh, outside of Quinton. Actually, Quinton's down there. Uh, over here, I should say, some activity couple small microquakes in that part of Oklahoma and the New Madrid zone with a 1.8 over the last 24 hours there of uh, activity. In the south here around the Middle America Trench, south of Costa Rica, actually way south of Middle America Trench, we had a 4 point or a 5.2 south of Panama off the coast of Colombia. That activity hasn't really sparked any further movement down here to the south. All kind of quiet. I've been watching this activity here along the Peru-Chile Trench. And for whatever reason, the USGS has been including these little quakes, which is pretty odd because I've never seen them include smaller earthquakes down here. Of course, that's 4.7, but I've seen uh, 2.8. And then a couple other smaller ones further down south that they've included, e even on the Earthquake 3D globe recently. Not for sure why, because normally they never show anything below the 4.0 threshold in this region. But uh, they are periodically showing some uh, smaller earthquake activity around the uh, Prue-Chile Trench. Like that 4 point, uh, the uh, 2.8 at 43 kilometers. There's that one down south here. It's a pretty shallow earthquake, 4.7 off the coast of Chile. And South Sandwich Islands area, that was at 6.0 from yesterday. No further movement today in this region. Uh, areas to the east or the uh, west over here along the western Pacific spread out a little bit south of Tokyo and through the Philippines area. Some deeper movement around the Fiji Islands area. But uh, things just kind of bouncing back and forth, I believe, between the west and the east here with a um, pretty obvious signature of east, uh, eastern uh, Pacific plate movement on the rise along the west coast of the states on that map they're pretty obvious uh what else we got here a little earthquake around turkey 4.2 other than that atlantic looks pretty clear trimmer activity from last night along the cascadia did kick up a little bit with 208 epicenters of trimmer along the southern end of the cascadia the solar activity continues to ramp up Go ahead and check out that as it's becoming kind of a hot topic with the train of sunspot activity kind of it's continuing 
Still looking at uh, 90% chance of a C flare uh, and a 25% chance of an M flare. X flare still remains at 5%, uh, but looking at the maps here, different magnetic fields of the sunspots themselves uh, could potentially indicate a rise in the uh, threat level in the coming days. These things bounce and spin around, not really spin around, but uh, maneuver around a little bit in, in the different fields here. And of course, these are all individual sunspots. We've got about uh, at least Earth side. What do we got? One, two, three, four, seven of them. These ones here, we got to watch though, as their magnetic fields start to uh, get more together and uh, potentially could raise that threat level of the flare activity in the coming days. I, I still think this is something to watch pretty closely with that train of sunspots. Uh, but for now, the uh, geomagnetic forecast here over the next three days looks very minimal. The largest solar flare within the last 48 hours has been that M1.2 that struck. But still, something to watch pretty closely, folks. We just don't see uh, this type of activity here all that often in that type of fashion this close and the uh, dynamics of it starting to uh, look pretty uh, promising as they head towards the center of the disk which would be a bullseye effect on earth should any solar flare kick off in our direction uh, let's see what else we got here coronal holes on the sun looks pretty uh this face here <laughs> kind of look like an evil pumpkin Still kind of looks like some type of evil face. See the eyes and nose and mouth down here? Coronal hole should be facing us. Little one within the next couple days here. All right, guys, we're going to jump off here. Have a great day. We will be back a little bit later. Keep an eye on the West Coast activity with things ramping up uh, over the last 24 hours. See you guys a little bit later. Peace out.